Please welcome our old friend Lisa Lampanelli. Yeah. Wait, can we talk about your necklace? Is that some sort of sex harness? Let me see. No, it's not because I don't have any sex because I'm menopausal and I'm not attracted to anyone anymore except Elvis suddenly. Is this what's going to happen when I go through menopause? Oh, girl, you've been there already. No, really. Okay. <laughs> Tell us how it works. You go through menopause and you just have no sexual urges at all? Well, me, that's the case, definitely. Like, they told me I was literally out of testosterone. So, I like, don't have any juices flowing. Oh. So, no, I mean, I don't mean literally. Yeah, I mean, no, like, I'm... sexually, I, yeah. like, not attracted to anything. Really? Yeah. I mean, I could see Zac Efron naked right now, and I would be like, bye, let's really? go eat. Yeah, I, I'd want to eat instead. I'm only, <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only sexually attracted to food because I've kept my weight off for four years, and it's pissing me off. Yeah. Well, you, okay, let's talk about that you yeah. had the sleeve uh, done what it was four years ago yeah, four and a half you know a lot of people they they actually gain weight back depending on their body and we, be- they call that the carney wilson effect oh, that's not nice <laughs> <laughs> that is not nice don't say that oh that's so mean you all thought it shut up we did not <laughs> yes you did okay the ralphie may effect is that any better oh, yes right. <laughs> because he's not that famous. but you've okay. done such a great job keeping it off i mean do you work hard or is it because oh. I've, i'm now two years and i haven't gained any weight i mean back. i guarantee you you're going to gain your weight back because of your self-hate but i <laughs> No, I, no, 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 it is hard. I have to like, I, I, I try not to emotionally eat anymore. And it's really difficult, isn't it? Because it isn't no. all eating emotional, no. basically. You, you know what? In, in the afternoons, right around 2 o'clock, I need some wheat thins. I need some crackers. I need some... That's all you need is wheat thins? Well, I, just, I need some carbs. Well, or... yeah, yeah, yeah. You're allowed carbs. I mean, it's not like you're supposed to starve yourself. We've known Lisa for many, 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 many years. Yes, we've, yes. We've seen you through thick and thin. Yes, literally and figuratively. <laughs> And, and now we're seeing you in a whole new light because yes. of your off-Broadway show. I know. Do you believe it? I call it stuffed because four whiny bitches wouldn't fit on the marquee. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really good. It's about food and eating. And I think a lot of it resulted from this surgery and from going, I can finally be out there and talk about like all my food issues. You see, Lisa and I both had the sleeve uh procedure done. Mm-hmm. I have never once been afraid or embarrassed to talk about it. I'm s- I'm proud of it. What was your worst binge ever? Like I once remember eat when I ate I once ate half a bucket of raw cookie dough from Sam's Club in front of the TV, and the TV wasn't even on. Oh, my God. I mean, that's a lot of food. And I had a friend say to me, oh, once I went and ate like a thousand clementines. I'm like, bitch, fruit is not a binge, okay? <laughs> Don't even start. Once you've eaten a Peking duck, including the web bill, and the web bill, the bill then we'll talk about a binge, you dirty hose I'm bag. a pizza guy. I'm a, I, can eat a, oh, I could eat an entire pizza. Pizza. Is it a bizarre though that now we can hardly eat like three bites? I know it's, it's but I get mad though. I get mad Me because I, I'll sit down in front of a huge mount mountain of beautiful chicken parm and I want it sucked I down know. every drop and I get three bites. I'm like, Damn. I know, but you take it home. And then you eat it for five yeah, days. Yeah, you eat it for five days. I know. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of uh, songwriters, for instance, Lisa, yes. they'll go through a heartache, uh, a heartache-filled breakup or whatever, mm-hmm. so they write a song about it. Right. You have decided to do this show mm-hmm. that really mirrors, you know, your life and how it's been. For, for yeah. many years, you, you were away, uh, overweight. Right. And you, you didn't like the way you felt, looked. Oh. Terrible. I was depressed every single day. And then I decide, okay, I'm going to try to figure this out. I'm going to go back to zero. I'm going to get the weight off and then work on myself emotionally. So this is sort of what the surgery did for me. Bring me back to where I was at 19 and go, okay, what went wrong? Be able to act it out in a show yeah. off Broadway. Right. That's got to be the ultimate. Tell it's us about cool. like, in your words, like how did you get to this place and why was it necessary to do this? Well, I, this was really funny. I almost quit comedy because I was so sick and tired. Once I did a show, about six years ago in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, of all places, and I didn't sell out, and I was really pissed off. So I'm like, if I'm not selling out in Pittsfield, my life's over. I'm quitting comedy. And so I'm an irrational bitch. So I'm like, okay, the next day then, I saw Carrie Fisher's one-person show on TV, and I said, that's what I'm doing. So this started as a one-person show, and then I was like, wait a minute, there's other eating disorders and problems that sort of have to do with food, like anorexia, bulimia, all these things that never touched me. And I'm like, let's put those all into a play and have it be a legitimate four-person play. But I, I'm assuming it has very, very touching moments, but there's probably oh, yeah. a lot of funny there's, stuff in Here's it what too. it is. It has a lot of dramatic moments, but then the second you need a laugh, it comes in. So Alan Zweibel, who had helped me write the one-person show, he's the guy who helped Billy Crystal with Seven Under Sundays, he said, write the drama part and the funny will happen. And that's always what happens. You don't wow. have to force the funny. When you're a funny person, it just comes out. Now, have you totally given up stand-up? No, uh, no. I, mean, I do like, uh, I haven't done it in, I did this weekend, but I took like six weeks off. 
you know, and I'm going to take a few more weeks off to finish up the play because we extended the run. See, nice. that's what's good. It's resonating with people. So, yeah, it's very cool. But, no, I'll, I'll do stand-up. But I think I really want – this is kind of – I hate to sound so queer about it, but it's kind of like – my life's work, meaning I think this, I was meant to get the word out there about this kind of stuff. Wow. So you actually, I mean, are you getting feedback saying, you know, Lisa, l- laughs and laughs and laughs. It's great, but you really are touching me in a, in oh, a among, great 90% great of it is about that because right. people, and you know what's weird too? I thought it would be all women and gay men in the audience. And a lot of these straighty guys are coming because they want to understand their horrible pain in the ass wife <laughs> and their kids and their sisters and stuff like that. <laughs> That's and, good. And a lot of the, I think it's really good because I have a straight male audience for the most part. And it's really cool to see that they'll come out and take a chance. Because, I mean, you do leave laughing. You do leave feeling something, you know? So if you have a little of both, I think that's a way to touch people. Now, what about your lowest point? What was the very lowest point where you just, you're almost embarrassed to talk about it? Oh, oh, well, there was a bit on The Apprentice. Uh, Oh, this was really bad. I just, it was weird. I was at my point where I was like, well, I got to do something because it's been 32 years of struggle with this thing and I can't get my head around it. So I remember Trump would go around the table and every, every uh, what do you call it, boardroom, mm-hmm. he would say, uh, somebody looked beautiful, you know? So I'm waiting for my turn, you know? Because I'm a, I'm a girl, you know? Yeah, I'm, I, mean, I know I'm kind of a battle axe at that point. I'm menopausal and oh. 20, no, 248 pounds. But <laughs> nice dry Elvis, Stop that it. was sweet. No, but um, <laughs> no, I knew what I knew. But it was, he would always go like, Teresa, you look beautiful today. Aubrey, you look so adorable with every passing week. And then one week he goes to me, Lisa, so I figure it's my turn. He goes, Lisa, doesn't Teresa look beautiful today? <laughs> <laughs> and like, I could laugh about it, but honestly, when a guy like Trump, who grabs peas, won't even throw me a compliment, like at one point, just you're like, I am a woman, you know, I would like, you know. And you're a beautiful woman. Well, and you know, and so I think I got, like, it wasn't definitely him, but it was just me going, okay, 32 years of being the fat chick has to end. Mm-hmm. Right. And I got to be judged as, well, now I'm the old chick and the, you're the creepy chick with blue hair, but it doesn't matter because I can control that. It's like the fat, I just couldn't get my hands around it. Uh, you lose the weight. You still have these issues you're dealing with in a different way sometimes mm-hmm. that you dealt with when you were overweight. That's why uh, your show sounds like it would be relatable to any yeah. and everyone. It's really cathartic. And yeah, I mean, all four girls have four different problems. I mean, anorexia, bulimia, there's a skinny girl who can't gain weight, which originally I thought I'd hate that girl when I was writing it because I was like, oh, what is her problem? Right. And there's huge problems associated with that regarding body image. They don't feel like a woman. They feel like little boys. Their mothers are really hard on them. So the actors playing that really feel that and then there's like thank god there's the beacon of hope the fat girl who likes herself fat and literally is based on the one person i ever met in 55 years who actually likes herself really i have never 55 years it took me to find one girl who likes herself fat and you know it's it's a really good part because my feeling is it provides a little hope that we can accept ourselves from the inside i could never with the the weight on but i'm trying now It's always a struggle. Yeah, like I still look at myself in the mirror and I'm cracking up all the time going, cellulite doesn't disappear. I still, when I sit down, I look like I sat on a gravel driveway naked for five hours. (laughs) So there's, there's always going to be something wrong with us, right. but we just got to go, you know, this is me. Also, you know what I'm big on? Even though I try to not emotionally eat, I'm big on the nighttime eating. Yeah, me I, too. I love eating at night. So I got to accept it and go, you know what? That's when I usually eat. That's when I eat. It's like, you know what? I'll just do the best I can every day. Look at us. Look at us in, in our relationship with food and our bodies. It's, it's insane. Thing. It's insane for everybody. Like I said, and I'm trying to figure out, I thought it was just women and gay men. It's everybody. Yep. It's crazy. So it's stuffed. It's going on till November 13th. And who knows, maybe you'll extend it again. Yeah, yeah, maybe we got extended through November 13th. Oh, can I give a ticket plug just for oh, no. your audience? Do it. No, because I there's been something really cool about your audience over the years that have supported me a lot. Well, look what we did with Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. That was all us. Yeah, all yeah. Us. Well, I knew that was you. Yeah. Lynn says hi. Well, hi. Um, so, well, no, your audience has always been, I remember they were the first audience who helped me sell out care. Lines and it always touched me in my heart. So I said to the WP Theater, I said, let's give them some money off. WPTheater.org for tickets and you type in the promo code Radio 5, which I don't know what that's. Oh, $5 off. You get $5 off. Now you, Elvis, you get free tickets because you're a gentleman and you always have me on the show. Absolutely, I do. Bring yourself and your little doggy Max and he'll play with Parker. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Is your dog Max what type Max, of dog? little miniature schnauzer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, that's so cute.
cute. I he's, love it. He's my best friend. Isn't that nice? We have no one else. He, it, uh, we have has, our food, our dogs, and our couch. Ah! My doggy has two daddies. <gasps> oh, oh, really? Yeah. My dog has one mommy, and she's not even that great. Oh, that's, oh, that's awful. <laughs> Once again, uh, go to, uh, what's the address? Uh, WBTheater.org. Type in Radio Five and get five bucks off because if you're an Elvis fan, you're my fan, bitch. Oh, that's nice. Stuffed. It's going on until November 13th, so hurry it up. Lisa Lampanelli, we I love, love you. you Elvis!